In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the FAQ component that I have made for you all. Now first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the component inside this stack. Nothing is here, but we have a component. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly copy and paste all these questions and answers into this new content. Now, when we click on it, we get this question and answer section. When you hover over it, you get to see questions and answers, right? So I'm going to quickly copy the questions and answer from this part. Well, the main fact is the reason for making this component is we, you can see like in most of the websites which are made uh, using Framer, those doesn't have a proper FAQ section. Like you need to double click on a question again in order to close that, which is pretty annoying most of the times. But yeah, that's why I decided to make one where which I can make a component which I can use like pretty much everywhere in every project. Uh, so yeah, that's why I made this component and decided to make it open source for everybody. So cool, I'm going to copy and paste all of the questions and answers from here. And yeah, in the second level, yeah, two items, the second questions and answer. Nice. And the third questions, this one should go here with add here and then third question answer is gonna go here right so we have the questions now i can delete it all right so first thing i'm gonna do is um i'm going to make it filling the container and then we we'll start we will start styling it so here we see the first option is the content that we have now we can we drag and drop it to reorder it if we want doesn't matter in whichever way you want you can make it and then uh, we are going to style it directly by going to this style panel so the first thing we can do here we can select the font of the question so i'm going to select enter semi bold and the answer font enter medium the question um font size i'm gonna go with 18 pixel and here 16 pixel for the answer and this one is for the question color the font color so i'm gonna go with some white color because later on i'm gonna give it a dark background just like the demo i showed you and the answer color a little bit less white like a kind of gray color and this one is the background of the question you see background question background so i'm gonna go with some color like darker blue or something like that right cool and then for the answer color i would i'm gonna select a lighter blue maybe just to show you how much variation you can do over here. So our style for the question answer is done. Uh, we can check it out. Like if we click it, it opens. The first one closes. Nice. Now we're gonna work with the transition. So I want to have 0.1 second and then a linear and damping 40, stiffness 400, that is perfectly fine, and that is what we want. And now let's go to the icon section. What we can do over here is we can upload the closed state icon, which is this, and also the open state icon. So I'm going to upload a white icon, which I downloaded from the internet. So plus white, this one. And for the open state, a minus white icon, this one. Cool. And the icon size, I'm happy with it, 20 pixel. Now this one is left aligned. What I want, I can make it right aligned and I can also control the margin property over here. So right now I don't want any margin, so maybe I'll go with zero pixels and zero pixels over here. 
right? Um, we could go with left, and then you see there is no margin between this icon and the question. So then we can use the right margin here, like 12 pixels or 16 pixels, maybe, right? So, but yeah, I'm gonna go with my previous options. Cool. Now, um, we can test it out uh, by playing it. Cool. We see the icon changes to the open state icon. Nice. So now let's go to the layout section. What we can do over here. We can control the padding around the question and also the answer. So I'm going to go with 20, make it slightly bigger than the default value, 20 pixels. And for the answers, I want 10 pixels. So the, the way it goes like the first one is the top, then right, then bottom, then left. If you hover over this three dot, you get to see. So the top padding, I want 10. And the, from the right one, I want 20, which is aligned with the question. From the bottom, maybe 20. And then from the left side, I want maybe an indentation. So I can choose 40 pixels. This gap is the gap between each question. So I can increase it to 24 pixel maybe. And the radius is the radius of this question container. So I can put 12 pixels here. And you can use zero pixel gap, uh, zero pixels uh, radius it depends on your design need. Also, you can control the border color here. Uh, I'll go with the um, something darker, which goes with the background and one pixel border width. Now, if you don't want the border, just make it zero pixels and it will do the job. But um, I'm gonna go with the border. Now we have perfectly used the layout options and in the behavior, what we can do, sometimes you wanna open, you know, keep the first one always open. So for this, we can use this yes option. So what it will do, it will keep the first one open when you load it by default, right? So yeah, this was basically it. Another bonus point, one thing you can do here is you can put inline HTML markup tags in your answer section because your answer might not be in one paragraph. It might need two paragraphs, three paragraphs. You can also include the bold text and other things. The way to do it is pretty simple. Just go to the answer section and use some markup language like markup tags. You see in the second question, we have markup ta tags here. We are giving breaks here before the credit cards and then breaks here, breaks here, and also a bold uh, value here uh, for the bank transfers. So, you know, the purpose of showing this is that you can use any kind of inline HTML markup tags here. So yeah, this was it. Cool. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a quick one, uh, but I think it could be really useful for your project. I actually created it for my own purpose so that I can use it in any project I want in any page. Other than that, if I go with framers, um, nested component structure, what if I, ha I would have, what if I had 10 questions then I had to make 10 variants, uh, connect them all together and then make interaction, then make 10 variants more for different screen sizes. So that's a heck of a job. Maybe that's why designers don't do it. They just leave it like that. You click it and then you click it again to close it. That's why I didn't want it. Uh, I wanted some good interaction here and here is it. So you have full access to the code component here. So you can go to edit code, you can tweak it in any way you want. So everything is here and this is a pretty simple code. If you have a basic knowledge of React, um, you can work with it. Even you can, if you have a basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, you can work with it, like change the CSS property a little bit so that, you know, by default you get some good stuff. So yeah, this was it. Happy designing. I'll see you in the next one.